Hello everyone, I'm Kenshin. Welcome to History Talk. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Also, remember to turn on the notification bell. Thank you. Today's historical discussion is about the California United Bank robbery. Due to the unstable global economy, bank robberies worldwide have increased significantly. Previously, I mentioned the famous Baker Street Bank robbery, which was a daring heist in history. Now, let's talk about another audacious robbery, the California United Bank robbery. On March 24, 1972, a group of bank robbers infiltrated the California United Bank in Nikaho, California, conducting a comprehensive search of its vault over the entire weekend. Their target was rumored to be around $30 million of illegal campaign funds hidden by President Richard Nixon. Allegedly, this money was obtained from Jimmy Hoffa as a bribe for re-election, aimed at securing a presidential pardon for the imprisoned truck driver boss. Led by Armil Dinzio, the robbery involved his nephew, brothers, brothers-in-law, and two other men. Nixon wasn't our favorite from the start, said Harry Barber, Dinzio's nephew involved in the robbery, to the Daily Beast in 2019. We were told Nixon had some money hidden. So we thought, who can he cry to? He stole it himself. The six-person team disabled the bank's alarm system by spraying surfboard repair foam inside the main alarm, then used explosives to blast a hole in the bank's roof on Friday, spending the entire weekend inspecting the vault. The FBI eventually tracked down the robbers, but it remains unclear if the stolen money was actually part of Nixon's secret stash. To unravel this, insights from involved individuals are essential. The prime candidate for this information would be Harry Barber, now 77 years old as of 2019, who has been working as a construction contractor in Southern California since his release. From his account, it was revealed that the California United Bank robbery began in Youngstown, Ohio, where Dinzio obtained clues about Nixon's secretly hidden funds. However, Barber was unsure of the origin of this crucial information. I really don't know where it came from, but from a good source, that's all I know, he said. This was enough to prompt Dinzio to assemble a robbery team, including his brother James, brother-in-law Charles Mergen, Phil Christopher, and Charles Brokeler. You know, initially, we were only four people. They said seven, but there were never seven. Only six were involved, clarified Barber. So why did he join? In fact, he was an excellent fit for the job, having become a skilled thief in the past years. It was an accident, he said of entering the profession. We sat in front of Sears, they had installed a theft alarm in the building. We said, well, I wonder what makes this thing work. So we pried it off the building and took it home. The only thing we found inside was a $2 battery. This discovery marked the beginning of a series of robberies. That's how it all started. Then we started at the supermarket. Then eventually chose the bank, he explained. When Dinzio heard that the California United Bank in Nikaho might have something, he said the opportunity was too good to pass up, especially since Nixon wasn't particularly popular among him or his associates. He wasn't one of our favorites from the start, chuckled Barber. We were told Nixon was hiding some money. So we thought, who can he turn to for help? He stole it himself. In short, robbing a sitting president wasn't an easy task, and Barber and his companions put considerable effort into planning. On the evening of March 24, they sprayed fast curing surfboard repair foam inside the primary alarm of the financial institution to ensure no police intervention. We had seen it before, and we wanted to try it. It worked very well. With the security devices disabled, Barber and others climbed onto the bank's roof and blasted a large hole in the ceiling with explosives. Although one might expect the explosion to attract unnecessary attention, Barber revealed they had a reliable method to muffle the explosion noise. We put sand on top to muffle the sound. Then these individuals used a ladder to access the vault, spending the entire weekend inspecting it. After the bank closed for the weekend, they could come and go as they pleased for such a long period. We observed everything to ensure we didn't fall into any traps. The robbery yielded a total of $12 million, although Barber suspected the figure was underestimated. 
I think it's close to $14 million, but you know. The FBI knows more than we do. Apparently, they were there. Regardless of the specific amount they took, Nixon's money was never found, and there are even claims that they targeted the wrong bank. However, Barber denies this notion. This was his. Some of it was Nixon's, he asserted. As evidence, Barber pointed out that despite believing Nixon wouldn't pursue them to avoid exposing his own criminal activity with Hoffa, they faced intense law enforcement pressure quickly. The only plausible explanation is that the president was displeased with them. Normally, when someone robs a bank, the FBI sends four or five agents, but this time they sent 125. So you know he was pissed, Nixon never publicly acknowledged such events. Regarding the 125 agents, Barber admitted, that doesn't mean he's saying it's my money. Barber clarified some inaccuracies, notably his and his Vietnam veteran brother Ronald's involvement in the robbery. They received a mere $10,000 in compensation. That's not true. I got $12,000, but it had nothing to do with the bank. The bigger mistake was Ronald not being present from the start. To be honest, my brother wasn't even really involved. He wasn't. The FBI knew that. Contrary to the legend of the United California bank robbery, where the FBI arrested the burglars after finding their fingerprints on dirty dishes in a dishwasher rented by them, Barber stated the truth was different. There was a guy named Dawson, who ran and parked his car in his garage. Now I guess Chuck told Dawson the whole story, and then he told the FBI. Then the FBI found Charles Brokeler or someone else to testify against me. They didn't even know who I was. In reality, after the robbery, Barber remained in hiding for eight years, living under an alias in rural Pennsylvania, believing it wouldn't attract attention. Everyone knows I don't like the cold. So I figured they'd find me where it's cold eventually. I used to send them postcards from Florida and Hawaii, wishing them Merry Christmas. Barber smiled as he explained this. However, his luck ran out when the FBI caught up with him. During his time at Long Beach Jail, he obtained a driver's license for informing on the warden's office being bugged. I was the only one in the prison with a license. After his release, he moved to Southern California, where he maintained a low-key life. Clearly, many facts about the robbery were rewritten, and it wasn't until Barber came forward that the truth was revealed. Yet, one question remains. Where exactly did Nixon stash the $30 million he allegedly accepted from Jimmy Hoffa? Was Hoffa's reason for offering the bribe truly to secure a presidential pardon for the imprisoned trucking boss? With both individuals deceased, one missing and presumed killed by the Mafia, unraveling the truth may prove difficult. If you like the content of the program, please don't forget to subscribe, share and leave a message, and please also turn on the little bell.